And welcome everyone. There is no one better to talk about mastery than this Ascension Way Shower, Sandra Walter, who literally walks the path of mastery. She is impeccable with her word, impeccable with her vibration, and she is a true leader for all of us who are feeling this clarion call to really step into the newness of 2020, which is already here. Sandra, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to the show. Oh, thank you so much, sister. It's beautiful to be here. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Again, I want you to sit back and relax as Sandra and I discuss a, a little bit about the 2020 timelines. And we invite you to join us in our New Earth tribe on the back end of this conversation in the QCTV uh, Zoom room. Uh, this webpage has more details on that. And we're going to share with you how you can join us in that program and access Sandra Walters' teachings and trainings. They are spectacular. Well, welcome, Sandra. Let's talk about this incredible gateway that we're already in. My goodness, we've been, the reports from the field have been saying like weepiness and core wound, one more layer coming up. But on the flip side of it, divine inspiration in immense downloads. Oh, goodness, yes. And a lot of the embodiment uh, folks, the people who are going through embodiment right now, which is just a little further down the path than some, uh, taking on bliss activations over the last couple of weeks that uh, really put us into a different state of consciousness. And this is something that I myself am experiencing so strongly. And let me just kind of uh, clarify that bliss states is not some kind of up there, out there, happy all the time kind of thing. It's a deep inner peace and a deep marriage that happens within the heart. And you start to feel the, the God self, the source self, the Christ itself very strongly in the body vehicle. And it resets your DNA and it resets your fields. And you have this sensation of calm. I was trying to describe it to a friend. I'm like, I'm so present. I'm not here. <laughs> it's like this really uh, um, amazing sensation of being everywhere at once and nowhere at once at the same time. It's a very uh, zero point, if I could describe it that way, zero point. And we've had over the years, we've taken shots at defining what that would be like but to arrive at this point on the timeline, this point on the path, when we're doing it collectively and embodiment started last year and they said embodiment would change everything. And here we are uh, a year later after embodiment began. And now we're starting to encounter these states of consciousness or rather our DNA is open enough to receive what's already there. You know, new earth is already there. Gaia is, has already ascended seven years ago. And here we are approaching this 1212 gateway uh, yet, yet again, you know, seven years of, of sacred completion happening this year. And we're starting to feel the rewards of that, of walking the talk, of being on the path, of really getting into the heart, really working with our DNA, really working on our ascension process. And yes, heavier, uh, higher frequencies like uh, bliss activations, of course, they cause more collective hearing. That's their job. That's the job of that pure photonic light to come in and create order. And in order to create order, you clean out the closet. So that's all that's going on. Um, but there's, um, you're noticing the tribe too. There's, uh, you're more comfortable with it. You're more comfortable with the clearing. You understand what's happening. You understand how to get through that. You understand not to wallow in that safety net of, oh, I'm going through clearing and I just want to stay in this mood. It's like there is so much more available and the higher frequencies amplify creativity and free will and activation of the freedom codes. So it's a whole different realm that we're going into, a whole different level of consciousness and creativity that doesn't require you know, hours and days and weeks and months of cave time and processing and everything. It's palpable, it's here, it's now, it's real. 
and it's blowing apart the stereotypes of what the Christ would look like and feel like, it's quite extraordinary. Yes, beautiful then. Thank you. You, you. you lead a unity meditation every Sunday and that's actually palpable as well. And that is beautiful. The work that you do on the DNA and the crystalline DNA and how we actually change all of that or activate it through these choices of love. So um, we invite people to check out all of your teachings on that because it continues to evolve. So, all right, here we are, this collective activation. You were saying that the bliss activations, all right, so share more on the bliss activations and the freedom codes, because I can hear many are like, how do we do that? How do we, how do we get that too? Right. Well, it is free will choice. So if you want to engage with the freedom codes that got released on July 4th this year, they're there. They're, they're already there. And a lot of people are using them to bolster their ascension process and to receive this level of light that does free you from the illusion. Now, we all know that the external reality is, is a fabrication of our collective consciousness and our personal choices and that it, it's just a, just a construct. And we can say that as much as we like, but when you get into embodiment, you start to, to witness uh, a stronger effect of your own consciousness on your own creation, your own reality choice. So in order to engage with a, a freedom code, you have to experience freedom. And for a lot of people, they need to rehearse that. You know, a couple of years ago, we did that retreat, New Earth Now, about getting people to feel into those higher timelines and allow it to register on the physical, allow it to register on the DNA, allow it to register on the light body. Because in order for the DNA, which is the interface for the higher self into the physical experience to open up to all that it is. It's an interface for all of your multidimensional self. So in order to get it to open up, you have to feel it. DNA is obeying the, the subconscious and the emotions and the thoughts and the heart all the time, which is why we get into so much work on the heart and so much work on the emotions and the mental levels and the physical body vehicle opening up to be to allow it to uh, obey what the now awakened ascending consciousness desires rather than lower self old self past self now you're engaging with the future self that's already ascended so when you start merging consciousness and getting into that state of absolute now there is freedom in that itself but when you engage with freedom codes and the ability to make higher choices and take action on those higher choices you rehearse feeling it first and then you actually start feeling it and then you actually start pausing in, in the middle of your day in the middle of your thought in the middle of your feeling and going wait a second this is not my preferred or desired reality let me shift just a little bit and you get used to shifting you retrain the brain, you retrain the emotions to go in the direction of what you want instead of what you don't want. So it's a little bit of practice at first, but the, uh, the freedom codes are, are what is actually causing these states of bliss because it released you from the lower consciousness. So a lot of people are using the freedom codes and they're just, it's just light. It's just light pouring out of the grids that's available to you. So if you go out and you're sit down on Gaia and you put your hands down and you feel into the new earth reality and what you would like to create your person, you know, your personal creation, what you would like to create and then expand it out into a collective experience. Suddenly you're resonating with feeling the higher new earth reality that already exists, that future thing. And then it becomes your current reality because you're going into zero point by activating those codes, going deep into the heart, expanding the fields out and allowing it to, to register and tell the DNA to do something new. So there's a lot of different methods. I'm actually coming out with a, a short little ebook uh, to get people to prepare and use these 2020 energies because it's, it's rolling quite quickly now. I mean, you feel into how fast 
time is is going right now it's really collapsing you know all these old timelines that were very linear are collapsing the higher vibrational timelines make you feel like time is just backwards forwards like it could move in any direction at any time there's a real timeless sense you're losing the density of memory that created your linear experience that's why everyone feels like they can't remember anything because you're actually collapsing uh, uh, the density of old memories clearing it through all our clearing work so all that shadow work had its place and now we move on you know but you don't stay in the old processing thing i mean it depends on where you are in your journey but for those of us who are um, in the embodiment stage there's a, a genuine conscious choice moment to moment that just takes you out of time and if you step out of time with a pure intention and a, a real fusion with the source of self that's when miracles happen because then the higher realms work right through you and you're out of the way you're just a conduit for source a conduit for love a conduit for reorganization of the lower realities and i'm witnessing that in my own live stream which is pretty incredible well listening to you it makes me wonder how you function what is a typical day then for you i mean it's just really being present and taking the the action then as it comes in from dis divine inspiration that can be overwhelming so how do you handle it well, there's a lot of there's a lot of creative stimulation. So the thing is with freedom codes, it causes a higher experience of free will. And then you realize you become very aware that every choice you're making with your thoughts, with your words, with your deeds, with your emotions are registering in the reality there. You know, the sacred mirror is on. So you become hyper aware of what you're creating, which is mastery. But moving through the day, there are always things that I launch my day with because that allows me to feel more comfortable with the, the unknown factors. If I do a couple of known things, you know, first thing in the morning, I do my decrees, I do my meditation, I do my yoga, you know, I exercise, I have to move first thing. Um, that's just how I come out of dream state and come out of sleep. Um, there's the the creative stimulation just makes you want to create like all these beautiful things so for me it's staying organized staying you know just keeping and, and completing things you know day by day it's just like okay i'm this i'm just going to focus on this i can no longer be the scattered multitasker that i was in the past you know and they always said multitasking scatters your brain and now that our brains are getting more coherent there's so much focus, you can't do like a, a scattered brain, you know, checking social media and checking on this and creating that and doing that. It does not work. It does not work because the brain and the heart are getting much more co coherent. So there's a lot of focus. There's a lot of conscious choice. What's today? What's presenting today? How do I feel about what I'm creating? Does it still need to be created? Or as we go into unity consciousness, you feel and co-create with everyone. So maybe the idea that you had yesterday is actually somebody else's on the other side of the globe. So feed it into the grid, offer it up, light ground it, write it down and offer it up. Maybe somebody else would like to create that. I'm gonna release that and let it go. And then next thing you know, somebody's got a brilliant idea on the other side of the globe. You know, it's that's the way it works. That's getting into unity consciousness. I mean, we all have the things that we uniquely would like to express and it would be beautiful if our communities really honored our unique expression. But there's a, there's a, I mean, they're just the, the nature of social media and where we are with our consciousness right now. There's a lot of like copying and modeling and stuff like that going on. It is what it is. But the new earth feel, the new earth realm is, is expansion. You know, it's expansion into the highest, coolest thing you could create. And then you just take the tools that you have and you try to you know, mimic what that etheric thing looks like and bring it into, into the density. But there's definitely a freedom to how we're going to approach our service work, what we're going to create with our service work, uh, who 
we're going to partner with and co-create with. I've noticed a lot of falling away of, of um, relationships that are just done, no judgment, but we're just complete with what we were creating. And now new things are presenting, things that I never thought I would get involved in. All of a sudden, wow, okay, there we go. And uh, it's, it's quite beautiful, but there's a lot of flow. You gotta remember that new earth is very flowy. Things are created and uncreated with the same ease and grace. There's no judgment or anything like that because everything is aligned with creativity, love, compassion, divine service, creation for the sake of creation, as long as it's positive and benefits um, the whole. You know, there's definitely a, a law of one uh, aspect to that realm where it's it has to be beneficial in order to manifest. So as we move into that, and it has to be beneficial to you too. So if things aren't presenting for people, or if there's push or struggle, you know, take a step back, do the re the reevaluation of your own highest trajectories before December first. That's like the first piece of advice in this ebook: is do a inventory of your path, an honest, private inventory of your path, of what you are, are feeling in your heart, what needs to change, what needs to shift, what needs to be kept, what's your highest creation, what's your highest dream, can you feel it, will you allow yourself to feel it consistently so that you get the energy moving, not just feel it once, put it in a box, light a candle and walk away, you know, that's the old, old way, we are consistent with our flow now, you know, we're not just willy-nilly, there's a lot of there's a, there's a lot of focus and not a trying to focus on one thing and create one thing. It's focusing on the thing that brings you joy and a sensation of new earth in the now. Does that make sense? Absolutely. That makes sense. In such a new earth way, we can all feel into that. And boy, okay, so December 1st, really focus in these next few weeks. It really is. 10 days away or so, right? It's not far. Mm -hmm. So the feeling aspect of it, the feeling aspect, all, all rules have changed. This means belief systems. I look back just to share a little on my own experience. And it's like, I, I question little things and I can see that it was created from a false belief or a belief system that really no longer serves. So that is really liberating because the old rules do not apply. And mm -hmm. so that's a really fun process to create. And so lots of different downloads can come in, but we really need to focus on little tasks to get them done. And also, what would you say about being very patient with ourselves? We could tend, some some could tend to get in that overdrive or wanting to force things a little bit, but you did say, no, you can't do that. Right, there's creative stimulation and then there's busyness for the sake of busyness. Um, and you have to look at your own fears. That's the thing about doing an inventory and the highest creation and everything, maybe, for this part of your journey, the highest thing you can do for yourself is to face your fears. Mm -hmm. And if there are, there are things that you want to create, but you're playing the waiting game. Well, when I have this, then I'll do that. When I have this, then I'll do, do that. I always remind people, I used to be a grant writer back in the day. And the people who got the grants were the people who were already doing the work in some form. They just wanted to do it in a bigger scale with more people or, or a more polished way. But it was always the people who were already doing it that got funded. And I was like, wow, that works a lot like the universe. If you're already doing that, you already have that energy going, you're already creating that and you desire, mm, let me expand this out. If you get scared about expansion, that's where what you need to look at. Start taking those little, you know, challenge yourself. You're an immortal being. You might as well enjoy the incarnation and enjoy the ascension. You know, challenge yourself, face your fears, you know, get, get out there and, uh, and, and really open up to that higher creation. But there's no waiting for the creation, even if you have to light ground it. And that's as easy as writing it down. I mean, I always show people, I'm like, I got lists, you know, that, that's whether it gets done or not, 
it's getting light grounded. It's getting light grounded. Maybe that's for somebody else. It doesn't matter to me. That's the thing. Like there are certain things I would love to create and it's wonderful to dream and feel about them and everything. But if I start working on something and, I'm, and it's a, a drudge or it's draining me, it gets set aside. You know, it's like, oh, not now. Okay. You know, and, and it doesn't, it doesn't need to be this revisiting of what we used to do, the way that we used to work. Uh, I've noticed a lot of that getting broken apart. You know, there's there's no like huge amount of cave time and I'm gonna, gonna, gonna step away from people. Those people are gonna miss out. You know, if you're kind of burying yourself waiting for the new year to to take even a micro movement in the, in the direction of your higher trajectory, the direction, direction of a creation. That time is now. The energies are supportive now. Those 2020 timelines have been in place since May. And you can feel it. And it pulled us into a higher level of our embodiment, which of course shifts our timelines and things fall away and people fall away and projects fall away and new stuff is there. But if you don't go in the direction of the new stuff and start embracing it, then you get you block yourself, you know, nobody's responsible for your blocks except you. So it's now's the time. Do a nice, playful, wonderful, deep inventory of what you would really like to create in 2020 and start now. Start now using that energy now. Yes, beautiful. We are inspired and empowered. Thank you. I know that there are some who are discouraged, but really when we tap into this, we can overcome that discouragement. There is someone on our chat line who said that, um, you know, feeling like going downhill and feeling discouraged. Um, and if people are feeling that, like in the collective, especially through this gateway that we just went through, is there something that you can offer for us as a way to connect in with the higher self? You mentioned embodiment. And for those who are embodying, then show us how you do that or yeah. give us a process. Yeah, and embodiment is a, it's a step in our ascension process. It's a step in mastery. It's extremely challenging. I want to mention that. I'm not bouncing off the walls going, yay, I did it. It's very different. It's a very unusual experience. And I understand that I'm in the middle of it right now. You know, this is not the complete embodiment, obviously. You know, this is, but the step in between what we're in right now, they, these embodiment levels get more and more intense. And because we have that vibration starting to embody through the human heart grid, yes, the higher frequencies always have a clearing effect. They always have a, a dismantling effect. And a lot of times people are feeling the collective dismantling of the old timelines and the old systems. And they're like, oh, everything's falling apart or there's no energy or things aren't moving. Be at peace, highest advice, be at peace with where you are right now and all the choices and all the actions that led to where you are right now. You are awake. That is the first primary goal of the higher self is to get the lower self to wake up enough so that you can have a different experience. So you can at least be exposed to the ascension, if not experience the ascension. So just be at peace that, oh my gosh, I woke up. Thank goodness. Gratitude is going to be huge right now. And that's the first thing you do in the morning when your feet hit the ground. First thing, first thing I do, I sit up, I am all that I am, and I feel myself as source. First thing I say in the morning. Second thing, my feet hit the ground. Gratitude, I do like a big, a big full yoga stretch. Gratitude, thank you for a roof. Thank you for a, a place and, and people and, and what I'm doing in a body and just being here supporting Gaia during the shift in consciousness. Thank you. Gratitude for whatever it is you have going on. Yeah, or even another opportunity to get over your self-imposed depression or whatever it is. You know? And then 
setting, you know, meditation and setting forth your intentions, the commands and decrees have been a long time mastery tool because they actually work, they actually change your, the light body, they actually change the way your brain works. So you might want to engage with that, but fully accepting where you are and like, hmm, okay, I'm not going to do the same thing that I did yesterday because I got the same result. So rather than going bananas, trying to, you know, get out of my depression, and yet I'm still doing the same thing over and over again. And as someone who came out of chronic depression from my 20s, I got some experience. So you, you got to mix it up. You have to mix it up. If you do the same thing, you're going to get the same result. And then you stay in this nice little safety net of, I am depressed, and I'm experiencing low energy, or I'm tired again, or whatever. You really, it's not forcing yourself to come out of that. I've been exhausted for like three weeks, you know, since the last gate, I'm just like, wow. Like I could, I could try to sleep as much as possible right now, but I have things to do. I just had my best friend visiting for four days. It was awesome, you know? And I'm like, oh, okay. And now I come back into my own privacy and it's like, oh, okay, here we go. You know, coming back into it. The sensation was there all the time. I was trying to describe it to him too, but it was, it's the um, consistent little tweaks to our path or little tweaks to our emotion or little higher choices in the moment that really allow us to shift out of moods, the moods lasting a little too long. You know yourself, you know what you're doing. You know that it's comfortable to stay there rather than move forward. But it's, uh, it's you know, again, use the freedom codes and the free will choice that's getting amplified right now. Because the thing is, if your choice is, I'm gonna stay where I am because it's comfortable here, I'm only going to talk to other people who are going to mirror back to me. Yeah, strong energies. All I want to do is sleep. Yeah, strong energies. I'm depressed. Yeah, strong energy. I just if you're if you're only if you want to stay in that realm, so it is. Maybe there are lessons there for you. But if your heart is going, get me out of here, or the higher self is saying, just move a little bit in my direction, and I will meet you there. It's the little choices, moment to moment. You got to mix it up go outside, take a walk. You know, if you feel like you're going into low vibe behavior or the same thing you did yesterday, stop. I'm going to go and take a walk. I'm going to journal. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to explore some sacred texts. I'm going to look at some inspirational YouTube videos, whatever it is, and just shift it a little bit so that you don't keep repeating the same thing because that choice is amplified. Everything is amplified and the, and it's purposeful. You know, that's the timeline division. Where, where are you going to be? You know, your choices are, are amplified. So, you know, if you want to go for the, the higher timeline, higher choice, and there's no, there's no, we all end up in the same place. It's just a temporary thing. You know, we're only talking, you know, linear time, but uh, you know, ultimately we're all one. But if you're experienced, you're playing with a body on a planet. You're playing with an experience. So if you want to have, you're like, this experience sucks. I want to have a different experience. So you move in the direction of that experience and it takes practice. That's why all of us have been working on Ascension for decades. Take some practice. Yes, it's speeding up. Yes, it's easier because you have other consciousness, other forms of you look that look like other people moving ahead. So that vibration itself is kind of pulling you into a new experience. That's why you feel the desire to awaken and ascend at all, because it's already been anchored into the human heart grid. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. All right. It's so inspirational too. I love it. Thank you for sharing on that. So everything is amplified. Our choices are amplified. This is, this is promising um, as new things come forth. I love what you said about the ideas being planted out there because we have seen that. We have seen ideas that one person has and it pops up over there. So um, I love it. And so others might need ideas and uh, support to run with it. So this is important to take this inventory since from December 1st um, through this gateway. 
you're having an event on 12, 12, 12, which this is, it, we, we were talking, this feels like a completion of this 11, 11 crystalline activation, right? And so this gateway that we're coming in December through January of this year, can you share a little bit more about that? Oh, sure. Well, the 12, the 12, 12, 12, the original one in, tw in 2012, there were a whole bunch of gatekeepers and grid workers who were guided to be on alert and receive codes in order to anchor them into Gaia that she was going to make her ascension. And we're all up at midnight, our time zone, you know, outside in, in, the, in the dark um, with our crystals out and everything. And we, what happened was we got a glimpse of new earth, like the veils fell for, for just a moment, you know, just a, a few, maybe 30 seconds. All of a sudden the, the veil just went away completely. Gaia revealed her complete like new earth ascended self, like look at what you've created kind of thing. And, uh, and she said, you're, and you're coming with me. And then the, the veil just dissolved again and we were flatlined <laughs> for the rest of the day. Like you couldn't, you could not maintain awakening, uh, awakened consciousness for most of the day. On the original 12, 12, 12, it was really wild because we were getting rewritten. The codes were getting like completely, um, uh, we were open conduits. So you were laying on the ground a lot. I mean, it was, it was pretty wild. But Gaia actually created that ascended new earth on the 12, 12, 12, and then of course, the timeline uh, collapse happened on the 1221, uh, which, which again, you know, happened behind quite a few veils. So not a lot of people uh, got a glimpse into that, and they thought it was going to happen overnight in one big shazam. And uh, and it was, you know, it it is what it is. But here we are, seven years later, and the higher realms, bless you, the higher realms are are saying, this is the last year to celebrate. 10, 10, 10, you know, the 10, 10, the 11, 11, the 12, 12, like our experience of time and the revisiting of what we did in the past will, will not be applicable. We still experience linear time, but we're not going to kind of regurgitate those gateways any longer. Like the seven sacred years are complete for the last one, which was the 12, 12, 12. So now Gaia for, for those of us who are carrying the codes and we've been disseminating those codes for seven years now. So all of us that are carrying those codes of the new earth reality of the embodiment, the desire to be that Christed self walking uh, in these realms, uh, the rainbow bridge is gonna really take off. So there's a huge collective DNA activation on, on, happening on the 12, 12, 12. I am not entirely sure what Gaia is going to reveal to us on that date, you know, there's a little bit of wait for it kind of thing uh, going on with, with the intel. So I'm extremely intrigued, but it was guided to get people together. So I was, I was fully welcoming being uh, on the 12, 12, uh, just on my own doing gate work. And they were like, mm -mm -mm, you gotta have to get people together. So, uh, so I am having a gathering here, but we're completely focused on a collective DNA activation, a revelation of the new realms, a next level of embodiment, a full code exchange, and that's global. You don't have to be in Sedona, that's global. You can tap in any day on the 12th, anybody doing ceremony, getting out on the earth, but doing ceremony in your house, if there's weather, anybody who's tapped in with that pure intention to be that way shower, that embodier, that, that guide for the next levels of ascension is going to receive that day. So pay attention. And then we roll into solstice. And then, and then Christmas, there's, a, there's a, a solar eclipse on Christmas. Some of the, wow. one of the strongest passages that we're wow. going to encounter happens in this December through January gateway. And we're already, we're already in it. I mean, the, the embodiment folks that are getting the, the bliss as well as the the not so bliss <laughs> you know because there's bliss and then there's whoa my consciousness is completely changing i really have to just breathe through this and fully accept the change because if you go too mental with it it'll drive you crazy you know it's a completely different state of consciousness so there's again amplification of everything 
So it's really a passage for a very divine personal as well as collective experience. You're going to have to follow the path of unity if you want that reality. So the, the ebook goes through detoxification of everything, not just physical, emotional, spiritual, language, you know, a lot of people just speaking what they do not want to create, actually don't want to create a lot of support for lesser realities by people's sharings. I feel like that the people just need to be aware of it. Hey, look at what you're what you're creating, because again, the amplification, there's a little splintering of realities going on. We're attempting to pull as many, you know, migrate the realities into the higher vibration. And I should say that when it comes to the amplification, the higher quantum effect of that higher vibrational reality, of compassion, love, and peace, and divinity has more pull more effect on the realities than anything else. So don't worry about lower realities also getting amplified. It's just, that's just a balancing mechanism. But the love always has been the higher vibration, always. So that's what, that's what we're going through. And everyone's gonna have to take the tools that they have learned to keep themselves balanced and centered and okay with the unknown because it feels very different. It's a very different reality. And you're going to see a lot of old belief systems and old mm, distractions or distortions going away. And if you allow it to not be a big drama fest uh, for your personal live stream, you're going to be okay. It's all going to be fine. No drama fests here. No drama fests. Thank you. Part of the level of mastery is the release of all those triggers. And that really is the purification that we go through in this process. So thank you for sharing on that. We have people in the Q&A who are saying they will join you there in Sedona. Are you in Sedona now? I am. Okay. I've, been here. I've been here on and off since July. It's really... It's yeah. really like your second landing zone. Yeah, second yeah. Well, the strong connection. We're working with the crystalline corridor. So there's a strong connection between Haleakala, Shasta, Sedona, and actually uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas. So it's like this weird corridor that's connected to the major crystal bed in North America, all the way to the old school Lemuria stuff that's underneath Hawaii. So it's... A lot of inner earth stuff going on, a lot of contact. That's something else that, that people can be aware of is um, personal, not global landings or anything like that. None of that nonsense. It's personal, personal, other aspects of you and star family beginning to present as the veils get very thin over the next couple of months. So pay attention, you know, don't be watching Netflix for three hours every night, you know. Get in bed, get in meditation, talk to your team, you know, really open up a space for that. If that's, if you would desire that to be part of your journey, you spend a lot of time visiting with the higher realms. And now there's a, I noticed a refinement coming with disclosure where there's a lot more focus on awakening and ascension. Finally, you know, the creation of the new, the next reality and focusing on that rather than <clears throat> some kind of payback or revenge for people who were steering people into creating other realities. Yeah, that would be the higher conversation and the higher perspective. And so you have become a part of uh, this year. We saw you come into the uh, disclosure fold, really. Let's call it the ufology crowd, if you will, the UFOlogy crowd. And you have been a bridge in that sense. So what was that like? What was um, that like in LA for you? And, you know, I mean, it's like here, you're, you're so dedicated on this ascension path and you do talk about ET and disclosure. So, you know, some of us are kind of hesitant to do that because we don't want to get rocks thrown at us. So I say that was very bold of you, Sandra. Um, did you experience any blowback? Because I guess it's human, 
it's par for the course. And how did you deal with it? Well, my, my thing, when I, when I said yes to those invitations, I was like, I'm just going to say yes. If somebody who resonates is doing the inviting. So, uh, so the people who were coordinating that conference that I went to, um, I really resonated with and wow, they did a great job. Oh my gosh, what a polished, beautiful conference. It was really great. It didn't like whatever the speakers were doing, what they were doing, but, but the, the look and the feel and the professional quality, I was like, wow, I would love to have a conference like that just for Ascension, um, which eventually probably the disclosure community will migrate into that um, because there won't be anything to talk about. You have disclosure and everything <laughs> that we've been talking about. Okay, and now you have disclosure, now what? You know. So then you move into ascension and helping people heal and all the focus goes there and people actually learn things when they come to the conference and it's not just talking about what was, you know, there's an, enough of that. And, uh, and I actually found it difficult to talk about um, my, my contact experiences in that context because I, I just, I just, I feel very different about my, um, my team. I, I don't, and the experiences, especially the kind of wild stuff that happens on Mount Shasta, light ships and contact and things getting out of ships and talking to you and things like that. I was always, I, I guess I was always much more casual about it. I didn't realize it had to be like this big thing. You know, it was never like a big thing. I was like, wow, that was weird. It, and it just, I, I didn't, um, I didn't realize until I was exposed to that community um, that it was, it was a big deal for a lot of people, you know, just because I had a contact since I was a kid and I was like, oh yeah, those people, the other realm. And it didn't, it never, and because they were benevolent, no, nobody was ever torturing me or taking me against my will or anything like that. It was, I didn't have that experience, you know, so I was coming at it from a very benevolent uh, contact and, uh, and a lot of it being other versions of myself. I understood that. And, and especially being on Mount Shasta, again, camping in the wilderness and having those um, very intense experiences. But it wasn't, it was never something that I felt needed to be kind of paraded around as like, oh my gosh, this is so weird. Because there were so many other people talking about the weirdness of of contact or um, or just talking about contact in general. So I was like, okay, good, it's covered. I'm just gonna focus on ascension because that to me was the ultimate revelation. The ultimate disclosure was the ability, like why we're here to actually use a divine, activate a divine human DNA to create a Christed race. I was like, wow, that's gotta be the coolest thing happening on the planet. So I just went there and that's where all my focus is. And I'm very grateful. For, for that path and for that guidance and, and for the contact. But, but I feel contact is, is going to be um, a very intimate thing so that people understand kind of like what I experienced as a child, only now it's gonna to happen to adults, you know, where it's very, it's very pure. It's very, um, it's very, it's, it's not this, let me download you with the cosmic intelligence. It's not like that. It's, uh, it's, I mean, it's unique to everyone, but we also have to understand that as the veils lift, you start experiencing other versions of yourself that look like Lyrans, that look like masters, that look like Syrians or giant birds or whatever, whatever it is. It's, uh, it's all one in the same. And as long as you keep yourself clear and on path, your experience will will benefit your path rather than steer you into, you know, you got, you got to watch the mental levels, you know, because it's a, that's a completely different reality that people are not used to having beings in your house is a very different experience for most people. And that's something that, you know, you got to get used to your consciousness needs to get used to it. So as lovely as it would be for them to like show up on camera in this now moment, I invite you to, but it's, it's just not applicable to our highest path, which involves the faith, which involves learning 
divine love and compassion. Yes, there are many masters that give us a ton of advice through our conduits. And God bless all of us that have had, you know, the, the courage to step forward and go, this is what I'm receiving and just be neutral about it. This is what I'm receiving. This is what I have to offer. Take it or leave it. You know, there's no religion here. There's no trying to impose another belief system on people. You just deliver the highest quality content you can and allow people to either engage with you and support you in that or let it go. You know, there's no judgment from either side is the way to be through this. This divine neutrality thing is gorgeous. It's been an absolute gift to embrace that. So be neutral yes. about the contacting too. You know, don't try too hard because if you invite anything in, anything will show up. So. Yes. And in that training, you said to really, um, it's like a little fire drill, get used to it. Um, because that first time that it comes in, it could be a little disheartening or disconcerting. So that's beautiful. Well, I love your take on the whole thing. I love the, the fact that, uh, you know, ufology, um, even conspiracy theories are ways that people begin their, their wake up. You know, it could be a dark night of the soul or it could be an illness or something that just makes someone question what it's all about. And so for you to bring forward this great interest in ufology in a way that is spiritual, that is really leader-like of you. And I love it. And I love this notion I was driving around feeling divine neutrality actually today. You know, uh, I'm very in touch with plants and the trees. And so my neighbor, my, my lovely neighbor decided to just um, take this weeping willow that was very old and just mm. chop the heck out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and divine neutrality really came into play. Now, this is not a cop out from any action that we could take to speak up and say, you know, are you gonna cut that whole tree down? Are you just trimming it? Or did you know that that's a weeping willow tree, right? Cause some people may not understand, but let's talk a little bit more about this divine neutrality because it's not a cop out, but it removes our engagement in a self-righteousness way. Right. And, and that's something that I learned. I learned divine neutrality. The only reason why I share it in, the, in my classes is because I learned it from, from working upstairs. You know, it was, the, it was the meetings of going into meetings with people that had extreme agendas or wanted certain things to unfold in a certain way. And myself as a, as a liaison and a, and a mediator for a lot of those conversations, I'm really good at it. My, my higher self is really good at it. So I was like, well, I need to apply this to what I'm, what I'm experiencing upstairs. And for, for people who don't know what upstairs is, it's just the higher realms, you know, the meetings and the brotherhoods and all, all that stuff that, that happens um, in, in the higher version of us. Um, my higher self, one of my higher selves is very involved in, in those meetings, but I was always operating as a mediator sharing the information that was coming from the grounded experience with the experience that was going on upstairs. So that ascension would unfold with as much ease and grace as possible. And, and a lot of beings just want their way or they want their timeline and they, they're very forceful. They don't, you know, we have different DNA and different expressions and I honor that, but, uh, but they can be very um, kind of, you know, controlling. And manipulative in the way that they engage with people. And I was like, well, okay, so you've got manipulative uh, folks that really want to control things. And we all know the end result. That's the thing. Upstairs, everybody sees that the primary Christed timeline is inevitable. And that happened years ago. And, and so this is, I mean, this has been years of, the, of these kinds of meetings. So everyone knows it's inevitable, but the way to get there, there's still people trying to like steer the boat, right? Of, of how it would unfold and, and they want you know certain things to happen and what about our timeline and if there's cosmic law and free will on this planet then we should be able to get our way you know so and there's multiple realities running at once so they're trying to control certain realities and certain 
beings and it, it's it was it's kind of interesting and i have complete uh i i'm empathic so i understand i feel what they're what they want uh, but but in order for me to make the highest decision and share what the human experience is on the grounded level and what the grids are going through and what the what gateways could open at a certain time and what people wanted you know different agendas come in and then they they want their agenda and if you're going to do that to us then we're going to do that to you and there's negotiations and everything like that and in order for me to not go nuts or 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 get involved in either side as a liaison had to go into divine neutrality and divine neutrality means I, I care, I care about the higher pri primary Christed timeline, obviously. I care about the ascension as the ultimate goal and the highest thing that could happen to everyone concerned, highest interest of all concern. That is where my heart is. But in order to be in these conversations or even in the conversations in the lower realm, you know, with people arguing about things and watching people, how they engage with people, if you don't judge in the moment, you have a much better opportunity of understanding and creating a solution for the highest outcome for everyone in that moment. And you can do that for yourself. If you see you're getting triggered, the neighbor's cutting the tree down. You could, you could immediately go into, and of course there's the rush of emotion that comes with it, you know, because we're, we're humans, we have emotions, but you don't let the emotion run the show. That's the thing with neutrality. It's not that you don't care, you don't carry. You're not carrying your emotion into the situation and judging it based on an emotional reaction or an emotional trigger or you wanting to control the situation. It's a much easier way to make a, to propose solutions in the moment or a little bit of a higher outcome for the tree <laughs> and for your neighbor and for you and like actually ask, okay, you really don't know why the neighbor's going at the tree, right? Did they just get like a new tree trimmer and they're just going nuts and they forgot and they, they're lost in the tree trimming activity and didn't realize, oh my gosh, I'm cutting the whole tree down. Like you really don't know what's going on with the person, right? So you can come in in, in a neutral thing and be like, oh, are you taking the whole tree down? Like, is it sick? Is there something wrong with the tree? You know, if you pull the, the person out of whatever it is they're doing to the tree or your judgment of what the person is doing to the tree and start asking questions rather than making assumptions and coming in and going, you shouldn't be doing that. Be like, oh, is the tree sick? No. Why, why, is it, why are you trimming it back so much? I think weeping willows need like 30% of their branches in order to survive. Are you gonna take the whole tree down? You know, just like gently come into uh, the conversation from a neutral, non-judgmental um, stand. And like, maybe the person has an agenda. Maybe the person wants to get rid of the tree. Maybe their grandfather that they hated had a weeping willow and oh my gosh, I can't stand it. You never know what's going on with people, right? And the trees don't care, honestly. The trees are the trees are the trees. They're like dolphins. You can take out a hundred of them and they're like, we're fine, we're immortal. You know, they're just, they just don't carry the kind of emotional reaction that humans have to life in general. You know, they're, they're connected to the big thing. Um, the same thing with the fires. Everyone's like, oh my God, the trees. And the trees are like, we're fine. I'm just leaving. I'm going to the new earth. You know? <laughs> they're, just, they're, they're like, I'm, I'm just leaving this form. I'm cool. You know, they have that perspective because they've been around for millions of years in a conscious state. So it's, you know, that's the neutrality thing. You just got to pull back, you know, ex experience the emotion, you know, stuff the emotion down. You go, wow, I'm really triggered by this. Okay, why? Well, I want my way. I want all trees to be, it, to exist forever, you know, in their natural state. So, okay, that's the thing. That's the thing I like. All right, but I'm not going to impose it on my neighbor. Let me come in in a neutral way and just ask some questions and try not to have in my voice uh, any kind of judgment because then it always causes the magnetic of the pushback, right? It's like, how dare you come into my yard and tell me what to do with my trees? You don't want to start that <laughs> argument, right? <laughs> no way. Yeah, so if you come in sweetly, then, uh, you know, it's, um, it's just that, that neutral thing really helps. And it really helps with being neutral, even with me and what I'm going through right now. 
you know, I had my best friend in my house for four days. We haven't seen each other in a while. I go through crazy amounts of changes. He has no idea. He's not having the same experience. No, but in, in the moment, because I'm neutral and because I've taught him that as well, you know, he's, he's the one person that I, I keep around as, as my best friend because he has that ability to be neutral and be in the heart, express his emotions, but he's not going to judge me. You know, and that's why we're, we're still friends. So be, being able to even be within my own self and be neutral about his choices, about what he's eating, doing, whatever, that's his choice of experience. I'm not going to impose my big ascension plan on my best friend. You know, it is what it is. And a lot of people who are maybe experiencing worry or concern that people aren't waking up fast enough and, you yeah. know, big bad guy is going to kill them if they don't wake up. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. Stop. yeah. All is well. All is well. There's a, 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 a different reality available to us now. And we are, everything starts in the etheric and then it densifies into these realities. And we are literally bringing that realm right here, heaven to earth, being the rainbow bridge and just demonstrating that, demonstrating what is possible with this DNA if you turn it on and you use it properly.